God bless you and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Yes, here I am sitting at the desk at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, broadcasting the word of the Lord to you. We made, as I mentioned earlier to, uh, to you, that we had to make some adjustments dealing with this current uh, situation with the coronavirus, and we've talked about that. So tonight we're going to study the word of the Lord, a little different floor, uh, format, but you know what? I'm excited about it. As a matter of fact, you know, I love the word of the Lord, whether I'm standing and preaching, sitting and teaching, wh whatever, uh, 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 however it has to be done, you know, I'm comfortable doing it because it is the word of the Lord. And as I said earlier today, God's best is for us not to gather online or to gather through any type of technological gathering. God's best is for us to gather together in person. But right now, that is not something that we can do. So we're going to jump in the word of the Lord tonight together. Now get, get comfortable. Amen. And I want you to follow me for the next few minutes as we study the word of the Lord together. You being there in your bedroom or in your home, in your living room or wherever you are, you have to make sure that you employ a little extra effort to stay in tune and, and to stay uh, uh, focused on the word of the Lord. Don't let the cat running by uh, distract your attention or the dog or, or the phone ringing or anything like that because the things that we want to say to you tonight are very, very important. I want to call your attention to Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter number 19, and we're going to read uh, verse 23 uh, and down and study the word of the Lord. Men, if you're watching tonight, you know that I am coming from the passage of scripture where we taught in our men's service the last time we gathered. And I want to teach tonight from this subject, the stir about the way, the stir about the way. All right. Acts chapter number 19 and verse 23 says, and the same time there arose no small stir about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be, it says that they, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, that they be no gods which are made uh, with hands. So not only this, our craft is in danger, to be set at naught, we're in danger of going out of business, but also the temple of uh, the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. And when they heard these things, when they heard these sayings, they were filled with wrath, the Bible says in verse 28, and cried out saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companion in travel, they rushed one on with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered into, entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he should not adventure into the theater. I'm going to stop right here. Verse 28 says, and the same time there arose no small stir about that way. I want to talk about the stir of the way. 
And uh, I want to show you that, uh, you know, Jesus says in John's gospel, chapter 14 and verse six, I am the way, the truth and the life. Uh, The word here, way, hodos, literally means a path, a road, a manner of religion. Jesus claimed to be the ultimate path. He's the path to God. Jesus claimed to to bring to the world the ultimate religion, uh, Christianity. Jesus is the road. He's the road map. He's the path to God the Father. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Interestingly enough, Christianity, before it was called Christianity, it was referred to as the way. The Bible says in Acts chapter number nine and uh, verse two, it says, uh, speaking of Paul, when he was Saul, it says, and desiring of him letters to Damascus. He want, he got letters to go uh, on a 160 mile journey, a six day trip to Damascus. And look at this after getting there, letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of Listen to this, this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He was looking for believers who were in this new strange movement uh, called at this time the way. And he says, if I find anybody in the way, I'm going to bring them bound to Jerusalem. Even then, Christianity was shaking up everything. Isn't it amazing, my friends, that this particular religion, the move of God that we are a part of, it has always, it has always, um, been at odds with the world. And many times uh, the Christian has to choose who he's going to obey, God or man. And I tell you, I heard Peter say this in Acts chapter number four and verse 19, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot Uh, but speak the things which we have seen and have heard. Let me tell you, they said they threatened them and told them in verse 17, but that it spread no further. They tried to keep the spreading of the gospel to stop it says, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth No more in this name. That name was the name of Jesus. (laughs) And so Peter and John told him, look, you know, uh, uh, verse 18 says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Even then, even then, uh, as it is now, do you not know in many municipalities when they when they invite preachers to come and pray uh, for the opening of uh, opening sessions in many uh, of, of government buildings and municipalities and when they're when they're meeting and they want the preacher to come down and and pray for the assembly. You, do you not know that in many cases you are asked not to pray in the name of Jesus, uh, you know, you know, kind of close your prayer out and say, Father, in your name, all of these blessings we ask in your name. Well, that's one of the reasons why I don't do any of those prayers because I've made it overwhelmingly clear. I made it known. I've made it known that we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. I don't pray uh, in the name of a pronoun. I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And we see here, he was trying to keep them from preaching about Jesus and they threatened them that it not spread any further. If you look at Acts chapter number 19 and you look at uh, 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 verse, well, let's go to chapter number 22 chapter 22 of Acts of the Apostles. And let's read verse four and see what it says. And Paul says this, and I persecuted, here it is again, this way unto the death, binding and delivering 
in prison, both men and women. He said, I persecuted men and women in this way. The way was the movement of Christianity. Acts chapter number 24 and verse 22, we, we, we hear from uh, uh, Felix. Uh, 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 and Felix said this, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of uh, the way, he deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the utter, uttermost of your matter. The point is that this movement is the way, and it was called the way. So in our text here, in chapter uh, 19, we see that uh, a stir happened because of the way, you know, look at, look at what's going on now. There are places, oh, we got to pray for our nation where they actually, uh, have made moves in certain areas. I've preachers have called me and talked to me from all over the, all over the country, literally, and have told me in, 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 in some of the areas where they live that they went downtown and, and some local town officials and various ones, uh, listed the church as non-essentials. Now, it's interestingly, in many cases, the ABC store isn't essential. In many cases, um, the uh, abortion clinic isn't essential that needs to stay open. And, uh, of course, the grocery stores. But, you know, my friends, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. There is always controversy when it comes to those who want to walk in biblical Christianity, controversy between them and the world and them and, quite frankly, the rest of the religious community. And there are those who claim to be Christians and are not and who, who uh, do not take the Bible literally. So the, the Bible-believing Christian clashes with them. The Bible-believing Christian clashes with the word. As a matter of fact, this way, this way that Jesus Christ brought to this earth has been clashing <laughs> with the world ever since Christ came and brought it. And I'll tell you, the day is going to come when the Lord Jesus is going to come back and get us and take us out of here. And we're going to let you guys have it. You can have the world. And uh, until the Lord returns after uh, the in the tribulation and uh, and he sets forth the millennial reign. But let me get back to this. It says here for a certain man named Demetrius. Demetrius, my friends, was a silversmith and he was a silversmith with authority. And um, uh, he was a very lucrative man, which made silver shrines of the goddess um, um, uh, Diana. Demetrius, a multi-breasted uh, figure, some of the earlier pictures was not of a beautiful woman, but of a, a grotesque figure that almost looked like a meteorite, multi-breasted. And uh, this, this goddess Diana was the patron god of, uh, of the Ephesians. And, uh, and, uh, it was, it was huge, my friends, it was huge. And, uh, uh, Demetrius figured out how to make money. Uh, on uh, on this uh, particular god, and he would make silver shrines, silver worthless, silver uh, trinkets, and the people, when they came to the temple to worship Diana, they would buy their little silver uh, trinkets with a, a, a picture, an image of Diana in the middle, and they would go into the temple and get the temple priests to uh, bless the trinkets, and then they would take them with them. Licentiousness was a big part of the uh, worship of Diana. Uh, immorality, lewdness, ungodliness, unbridled sex and orgies. The temple of Diana was filled with prostitutes, both male and female, who would have any kind of sex with anyone uh, that wanted it. And this was all a part of the worship. And Diana was the goddess of of the Ephesians. It was a wicked, wicked, wicked religion. It was just like the pagan world before the pagan world got touched, got 
kissed by the doctrine of Jesus Christ and by the movement of the way. And so uh, this man uh, said that uh, this, 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 this trinket, this Diana uh, trinket, this silver smith, it says this, says it brought no small gain unto the craftsman. It brought no small gain to their guild. Their guild was like um, their union. And uh, everybody was in on it. They were they was making money, hand over fist. Everything was going well. It was unionized. Listen, this thing was too big. It was too big for any one silversmith to even keep up with the demand. So there was a, there was a union, a guild of silversmiths who made uh, good money. Uh, 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 in this trade of uh, these trinkets that they that they sold and made in the name of Diana, he the Bible says this, that this Demetrius says he called together with the workmen of like op- occupation and said, "Sirs, you know that by this craft we." have our wealth. We've made money doing this. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, not only at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, not just here, but throughout all Asia, listen to this, this Paul have persuaded and turned much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Notice this. He said, this Paul, he called his name. You know, when you are a gospel preacher and you're known for telling the truth, you become a target of many. And, and this is why the preacher needs so many people uh, pray for us. Pray for those of us who dare preach the uncompromising word of God, who dare stand on the scriptures, who dare not become a simple entertainer or someone who simply wants to share with you or someone who shies away from uh, the the subjects that may bring persecution and controversy. Pray for the preacher. Pray for your minister. Pray for me. Pray for those who will dare stand and preach the word of God, whether it is commercially viable or not. I often say to all ministers, there will come a time when the ministry of preaching And the industry of preaching will clash. And because what will happen is the truth is not always is not always commercially viable. And God may give you a message to preach that 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 may not sell well, that may not go over well with the people. And you say, oh, God, I don't want to touch this because I may lose some members or I may lose some appointments. And God is saying the Lord is saying, will you preach my word or not? Will you say what I tell you to say or not? And at that point, you got to decide whether you're going to be with the in crowd or with God's crowd. My friends, I'm going with God. Paul said that the, the uh, Demetrius said that this Paul, this Paul had persuaded folk. He says not just here at, at Ephesus, but he's persuading people to turn away. People, our sales are down. Our money is hurt. The, the people aren't coming like they used to because this Paul is telling the truth. He says there are no gods. There's no real God that's made uh, with man's hands and how true that is. And what a novel message. They hadn't heard that before. They hadn't heard that before. So here's Paul preaching under the anointing, telling them that the, the goddess Diana is not real. Those trinkets are worthless. You are serving a false God and people were getting delivered. I've seen many people frown on me. I've lost members who said to me, when I call Islam the religion of our enemy, they said, preacher, we feel bad about that. We don't think you ought to say that. Well, it's not the religion of our friends. And many times what I have have stood and said that I represent one religion, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, People have uh, uh, had some things to say about that. But listen, the Apostle Paul was not a part of uh, a, a community, the faith community that included all religions. Paul did not, Paul was not a promoter 
of postmodernism. No, he preached that Jesus is the only way. And he told them in Ephesus, there is no God that's made with men's hands. And he had such an anointing that he was having an effect. And look at this, so that not only, uh, Demetrius says, so that not only this, our craft is in danger of being set at naught, not only is our craft been in danger of being put out of business, but also the temple of Diana, the great goddess Diana is being despised and her magnificence is waning. Let me tell you, this is so true. This is why communist countries, in many cases, socialist countries and many Islamic countries and Buddhist countries around the world do not allow Christianity to be preached and taught in their streets, in the streets of their cities. Because here's the thing about biblical Christianity. When preached by an anointed vessel, it has a irresistible lure. Praise God. Amen. The, the, Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. There is a irresistible draw of the cross. So to block this, to block this draw, we've got to do all we can to keep this message from being heard. He says, because Diana is her, her magnificence uh, is being threatened. The temple of Diana seated in its arena over 20 5,000 people, and the temple of Diana was considered as one of the seven wonders of the world during ancient times, and all of that was threatened by a preacher by the name of the apostle Paul. So now they says uh, uh, we're in trouble and Diana is in trouble and, uh, and, uh, and her magnificence is threatened whom all Asia and the world worshiped. Well, you know what Demetrius knew? He knew that there was a new sheriff in town and everything was being upset. The Bible says the ax is laid at the foot of the tree. <laughs> And let me tell you, Diana, which by the way, the worship of Diana is gone. When you talk about Diana now, we talk about her uh, as a part of Greek mythology. Uh, maybe she's a cartoon. Maybe she's a, 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 a movie that you can, some, a character in a movie that you can go to see. Or maybe a comic book character. I don't know, but I know this. She's not worshiped. But Jesus Christ is alive and well, and biblical Christianity is strong and going strong, and we will continue. Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And here we are, some 2,020 years later, still promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ain't nobody preaching Diana because Jesus toppled Diana. And when these people heard this, they were full of wrath and they began to shout, great is Diana of the Ephesians. They, these, these are silversmiths. They were screaming and hollering and they got all worked up in a frenzy. And look at this. The Bible says in verse 29, it went from Demetrius and, and the guild, it says, and the whole city was filled with confusion. The whole city got riled up. Everybody, that, that, was, that was confusion in the cities, much like the land today. Can we have church or can't we? What can we do? What, what are we going to do with this virus? How do we respond? Let me tell you something, my friends. Biblical Christianity will keep you calm in times of great confusion. And there were two men that they caught. They caught them because they recognized that these men were with the Apostle Paul, that these men had served with him. The two men was Gaius and Aristarchus. They grabbed them, these men of Macedonia. And when they grabbed them, the Bible says that they were Paul's companions in travel. They were evangelists. They were men of God who traveled with the man of God and they identified with the man of God. Oh, the people now who try to distance themselves from the real preacher, the true preacher, the truth preacher, the preacher who shakes up the community and, and, and make people at times fighting mad. I mean, sometimes people just, they spit fire 
at God's man. Well, I'm not ashamed of preachers like that. As a matter of fact, these are the kind of preachers that I want to be associated with. I'm not interested in these little powder puff guys who talk about nothing, who have mastered the art of saying nothing well. You got, listen, preachers, you got to cry aloud and spare not. So they grab these men and look at this. And they rushed with one accord into the theater. When they, they took him into the theater, that is the stadium. They brought him into a stadium and the stands were filled. Some 25,000 people in, in this stadium. Oh my Lord, it had to be a, a, a frightening thing. But they grabbed them because, listen, Gaius and Aristarchus was not their target. Their target was Paul. They knew, you know, there are certain things that are true about certain kind of people. And if a man is a man of uh, character, a man of deep conviction, a man of, of, of faith in the Lord, a man who is worth his salt, a true warrior, if you grab those who have been fighting with him, then he will do what he can to rescue them. They grabbed Gaius and Aristarchus. When Paul learned this, look at, look at Paul's first response. It says, and when Paul would have entered into, in unto the people. That is, when Paul learned that, that, that they had grabbed his two men, his first and second assistant, Paul being a mighty man himself, a warrior for God, no powder for puff Christian was he, but Paul was a strong man of God. Paul was going in to try and rescue uh, his men because these men uh, were warriors. They were warriors. They were on the front lines. It's just like when you're standing on the front line at the abortion clinics or on the, on mo the multiple front lines that we've stood on. What an honor it is to stand on the front line, shoulder to shoulder with born again believers, black and white, standing for the cause of Christ. I have stood on the mall in front of the Supreme Court with born again believers from all over the world standing up for marriage and I saw the kingdoms clash and I was honored by, it was a, I thank the God of the Bible for being able to be a part of that move of God. And here we are today, my friends, the kingdoms are clashing again. Let those of us who truly believe stand shoulder to shoulder. The disciples, however, they stopped Paul because they knew that God had other works in him. The book, of, the book of Colossians, the book of Galatians, the book of Ephesians, the book of Philippians, the book of uh, Titus, the book of 1st and 2nd Timothy, the book of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and so forth and so on. The, uh, all of these books God had in this man of God, and God knew that if Paul rushed in, that they would have killed him. These disciples stopped him, and he had friends in high places. The Bible says the chief of Asia and his, which were his friends, they sent and they stopped the man of God. They said, don't go into that theater. And he didn't go in. He took the advice of those men of God. But my friends, if you would study the rest of this, you will see that the Lord the Lord took care of Gaius and the Lord took care of Aristarchus. The Lord delivered them and the Lord delivered Paul and they continue to minister the word of the Lord. And I, as I have forestated earlier, the, the, the religion of Diana, the goddess of the Ephesians is dead and buried, but all oh, the work of Jesus Christ continues on. So my friends, I want you to know, I want to encourage you to stay in the way. <laughs> walk in the light, serve the God of the Bible. Read this story again. Con continue to read uh, Acts chapter 19. Read the conclusion of the story and you will see that God brought them out. And the same God who saw them through as they walked in this way, that same God, the same Jesus is going to see us through this. So I thank you for being able to teach the word of the Lord to you tonight on this medium. We're not at the church and I miss being in the sanctuary. But for now, 
we're going to serve in this manner until God blesses us to be able to get back into the house of the Lord. But until then, I want you to stay on your face before the Lord, to serve the Lord with gladness. We are not defeated. We are not going down. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want to encourage you, stay in the way. God bless you in Jesus' name is my prayer.